Welcome to the NHL 94 podcast, part of the CBP Media Network. This podcast is dedicated to the greatest game ever developed, where I will talk about the development of the game, tournaments and matches, our stories about NHL 94, the people that make up the NHL 94 community, the games won, lost, and the chirps that need to be heard around the world. Welcome 16-bit hockey fans to yet another edition of the NHL 94 podcast and today it's gonna be a very special episode because today I have Angry Jay coming back once again and today it's gonna be a discussion about building lines and AJ thank you for coming on the show appreciate you taking time to come on but I I know that you've done this in the past at least two different avenues you've done a very lengthy right up on the forums and still to this date i use that as a guide for building my lines and you've also done a video a bunch of videos on how to set up lines for the genesis and uh today's going to be an update on that we'll try to update this as much as possible we'll talk about the norse division for the genesis so people looking for an snes side of things you just have to wait but something is coming in the future is that your cat <laughs> Yeah, he's trying to make a guest appearance, but he doesn't know his lines too well, so we're going to try and leave him out of this one as best we can. I hope he's back for more. <laughs> if he wants it, just humor him. I'm cool. <laughs> he's he's going to be a great addition. And here we go. So we can start off with the mighty Chicago Blackhawks, and we can just dive into that. Let me just make that screen a little bit bigger. Hopefully people can see that as well as I do. So, yeah, let's just go right into it and talk about how you would set up a line if you were the Chicago Blackhawks. So we may also just start off with our best foot, right? Maybe one of the top teams in the game, arguably so. They're tier one. Um, what you have is probably a top three player in Jeremy Roenick. So building a line can be, you know, you could feel like you're forced to play him at center if you really want to. And, you know, we do have our first uh, option here, Larmer on the left wing, Roenick at center, Joe Murphy at right. It's a very high skill line. Um with Ronick, you know, you're just ripping one timers with him. You're going one on one through the middle with him, and then he's just a defensive force. But I've seen people, you know, use Ronick as a winger. So you can throw him on the wing if you really want, and try and take advantage of some things outside. Maybe give him a little bit more space to work with. Um, but you really can't go wrong with him anywhere you put him, because Larmer is an acceptable center. And then you have your support wingers, Joe Murphy, Christian Rutu. Um, they can play in tier one and then everything else after that is um, just kind of depth. It's really difficult for subs in tier one to be impact players. So you have to be very careful with what you do with them, but Ronick and Larmer, great one, two punch. And then you have your defense. You have your classical choice of Steve Smith, big, huge guy who can CV check and Chris Chelios, who's a do everything defenseman, or you have, Cam Russell, who has very little skill, but he's a weight bug checker. And he can just crash into people willy-nilly. And then you pair him with Chelios, and that's still a very strong combination. Um, like, Cam Russell's great against uh, Alexander McGillney, Sergei Fedorov. He can he can handle them. And then you got the Ed Bell Fournette. I got a, a quick question about, before we talk about the goalies. Um, sure. Does it matter how it is you set up the lines if you're fight if you're facing off against a bigger team versus a smaller team? Say you're you're up against the standard lineup of the Boston Bruins or even the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, for instance, versus maybe an adjusted lineup like the Montreal Canadiens, where they're throwing out all these light guys on there. Are you going to adjust the way you're going to be setting up the Blackhawks? Are you going to, in your opinion, still keep Ronick primarily as a center, or uh, any of changes? You know, to maybe Steve Smith switch him up for Russell. I mean. How would you deal with a bigger or smaller lineup with the, the Blackhawks? So if you're facing off against a bigger lineup, a team that can be very aggressive or a player that's very aggressive when they use a team, um, you could put Ronick on the wing. And so when he's he's got a little less traffic to work with, so you try and make people miss from the outside and open up that middle, um, either for Ronick to skate through or to, to dish off passes to a, a one-timer option. He's, he's the best. The thing about Ronick is he's the best playmaker and he's the best scorer on the team. So it's kind of what role you want to fill and what the team that you're playing against is going to give you. So I think there's definitely some leeway there for making those decisions. And uh, you know, Steve Smith's 
he's a very good defender, but he can be a little slow against some of these faster mm -hmm. forwards. I mean, he has four, four skating, which for a defenseman is really good, but he's 11 weight. So he doesn't accelerate quite as fast. He doesn't get the top speed. It's a little bit harder for him to turn. Whereas Russell's a little bit more manageable in tight spaces. Now so the goalie up an option. Those goalies, uh, I'm looking at it. There's only one goalie, right? Like Belfour, he's the, the only guy that you're even going to think about starting. Would anybody even consider putting Jimmy Wade in there? Is, 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 is there like an a, just a, a idea that somebody would say, you know what, I'm going to sit at Belfour and <laughs> you can sit this one out. I mean, no way. He's the, the stud in the game. Him, him and Roy are, are one and one A. So there's, in your eyes, any way you'd sit down at Belfour and say, Jimmy Wade, you're starting? No, this is purely informational because, you know, if you if you get – uh, you know, blitzed upon early in the game. It's not uncommon to see people change the goal. You just go to the backup. But I want people to see the difference between the two goalies and go, yeah, maybe that's not a good idea in this situation because look at what you're giving up. I mean, if you give up a few bad goals with Belfour, you should probably be looking at yourself and not at him. So don't put in weight. <laughs> Agreed. And I see Goulet, you have him very low on the list in terms of options for forwards. It's funny because he's starting. He He's a starting player on, on the Blackhawks and you know his career has been uh, stellar up until this point. So it's funny to see he's so low on the list and he's not really considered as an option for the most part. So um, yeah, it just he's more just a spare part at best, right? He's a spare part. He's informational for people who played, you know, just don't change reliance for whatever reason. Um, he's he's not a player for tier one. If this was tier three or tier four, he might be okay. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to want him lining up against Dino Cicerelli. He's going to lose that battle every time. Yeah. All right. I think we've exhausted the the Blackhawks. Any last uh, comments or anything you want to add before we switch over to who's next? Dallas. So any last comments on the, the Hawks? Maybe your cat I wants think, to say something. Uh, uh, he's just looking at me. I don't think he has anything. But yeah, <laughs> Chicago's just a great team. They have stick handling. You know, Chelios and Ronick are great stick handlers. So you can lead the tech with the defense or the offense. And you're probably going to be very successful either way. Um, they don't have a ton of depth, but they have great players at every position. And it, that can be very difficult for every other team to replicate. You're going to see that teams are going to have strengths, hit one position or not. Chicago has a strength all throughout their lineup. Yeah. It's almost like they have an all-star everywhere. And uh, uh, if in, in a hands of a competent player, they're a force to be reckoned with. So, all right, Chicago, you're done. Let's move on to Dallas next. So here we are. The stars, it looks like you don't have too much in terms of options in the, the forward ranks. And um, yeah, it's just, uh, I I don't know what to say about this. It's a team that, I mean, I'll just give you just a quick comment. I expect so much more out of them, but every time I play them, they leave me wondering, what did I pick? Why did I pick them? But I want to hear your thoughts on this team. This is the team that will leave you wondering the most, but it'll also leave you completely baffled with how well they can play. They're they're a tier three team, but they can easily play tier one, tier two, and they could be easily as bad to play down in tier five. I mean, they're very inconsistent, but when they're they're on, they're extremely dangerous. A lot of people in the community actually enjoy using Dallas because of their ceiling. You have two players, Madonna and Courtnall, who you can put any position on the ice, and they're going to flourish because of their speed and their ability to carry the puck up the ice and just dictate tempo. If you have a very aggressive opponent who, you know, just misses checks, this team is going to take advantage of by creating chances all throughout the game. And then you have one of the best weight bug checkers, Neil Broughton, who can also play offense a little bit too, um, to play defense for these guys because they don't really have a strong defensive core. As I'm sure you'll notice, there's not a lot of, so the green ratings are basically to show that these are strong ratings and it's based on position. So, you value four agility, four passing, stick handling a little bit more as a defenseman than you would say a four. That's why they're not highlighted for forward. So um, you see that there's a lot of red ratings actually on Dallas. You know, they're, they're very norm, very average on defense, but Neil Broughton makes them excellent on defense. And you don't really want to deviate from that too often because in your lineup, because they just work so well together, those three players. I mean, Gagne is a perfectly fine player, but he's not, he doesn't have enough pop in his game to offset, you know, the defensive shortcomings that Courtney and Madonna can have when they're just running up the ice. So we, that's why there's not a whole lot of options. It's just like depth reserve players. I mean, if you have injuries or, or penalties, Ulf Dahlen's perfectly fine. You have some high stick handling guys like Mike Craig, Brent Gilchrist, and then Mike McPhee's like your lone CB option. But 
Mm-hmm. You, you don't really play him in a tier three matchup because you, know, you just have so many other options that are good. And then this is also a team with kind of like that classical defensive defenseman situation where you have Tenorti, who's the CB guy, who doesn't really move the puck well, and his strength is shooting, but he doesn't skate very good. So how are you going to go take a shot when he's not going to get up the ice? It makes it really hard to take advantage of his one of his strengths. But then Tommy Shodin, he's an excellent, you know, number two defenseman. He's agile. He's right-handed, so you just put him on his natural side. He plays a very calm game. Um, he has a little bit of shot power, sure, but you're not really going to shoot with him because you have so much offensive firepower up front anyways. And then, you know, Jim Johnson, uh, Matt Pachuk, they're a little bit lighter options, but they're not light like Cam Russell. They're not game changers like Cam Russell. So, And they also have low agility. So the trade-off here, it's weird. You can go either way with Tenorti or, or Johnson or Matt Pachuk, but I tend to usually go Tenorti now, whereas previously I was Jim Johnson. I just like having that extra CB ability that Tenori brings to the table because there isn't a CB checker on this roster. There's a weight bug checker. There's some middleweights. And then Tenori, I think, can really uh, lay the lumber out there against tier three forwards. You know, Mike Gartner, he can take Mike Gartner down. Uh, Doug Gilmore, he's going to just crush Gilmore. Um, the whole Quebec lineup, he's going to eat them up because they're not very fast. So I think he's a little bit better option in this tier. And then you have John Casey, who's just... You don't see a lot of green ratings for him. He's a very average goalie. He's even got, you know, maybe his stick is a little weak, but two weight. He flies around out there. He's excellent in goalie control for agility. Um, he's kind of one of those guys that you look at his rating, it's like 60 or 62 or whatever. You, not that exciting, but he's excellent when he's uh, in user control. This team kind of reminds me in a way of like a poor man's version of the um, Vancouver Canucks. In that you have these forwards, they are, in comparison to their defensemen, they're light years ahead of them. And this team, you know, their defense is lacking just like the Canucks is. But the Canucks, obviously, their forward ranks are better. But it, to me, there's some a little bit of similarities between the two. But every time I pick the Stars, and this happens more often than not, it's like, as I mentioned, we started, it's like, why did I pick them? They're, they're just, <laughs> I, I can't seem to put the biscuit in the basket. Modano... He's got all the credentials to do it, and same with Cornell, but they miss all the time. It's like, oh my gosh! So, and there's no real option aside from either of them uh, in the middle. Like you're basically stuck with either Madano yeah. or Cornell, which is good and bad, I guess. Uh, when they're on, they're on. When they're not, it's bad. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's just uh, yes, you you've really nailed it on the head. They're basically a poor man's version of Vancouver, but they can play with Vancouver when they're hot. Um, their shot accuracy is a huge weakness on this team, so you the, you need to create a lot of chances. That's why it's so important for them to just court on Madonna to be running and gunning because you're not going to score five goals on six chances probably with this team. You need 12 chances to get those five goals probably. Um, so the, the, they're a frustrating team to, to use for sure. They're not easy to pick up and play like Chicago or Detroit yeah. where you just pick them up, they feel good, they're usually on fire. You know, it just things come easy. Once you start getting into tier two, tier three, you kind of have these teams where it's like, okay, they're pretty easy to play with, but they don't have a high ceiling or you got to level up with them. And when you do watch out, and that's what Dallas is watch out when somebody very talented has them working at a high level, they're going to look like a tier one team. And that's when you got to watch out. Yeah. Agreed. And yeah, Cornell, I'm looking at the, what you've have an aside there. It seems like he's a, a better option in my eyes at center than Madano because he's slightly lighter. Um, slightly more accurate, less shot power, um, and Modano has better passing. So it almost seems like you prefer to have Modano on the wing and uh, sacrifice that five-shot power for Cornell's three-shot accuracy. So, um, yeah, may- maybe that's the better of the two options, but then I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> Sometimes things work good on the, the drawing board table, or the drawing room table, but actually put in reality and put into te- practice, it doesn't work out whatsoever. So... I don't know. No, yeah, it's you're you're right. That that either one can play center. Both of them are correct answers. Um, both of them can play wing at a high level. They're both great answers there. I mean, it's kind of mix and match based on who you're playing against. You know, if you're playing against a slow center that's gonna have a tough tough time keeping up with Courtnell, maybe you put him there. And then, or if you have a defense that's kind of sagging back, giving you one timer lanes, maybe you put Madonna up there because he's got the five shot power and he's gonna get a little accuracy boost from those one timer opportunities, and he's just gonna fire missiles by these goalies without knowing what hit him. Yep. 
And if you could do manual goalie really well, this is a good team, as you mentioned, because John Casey with the two eight gives him the ability to go basically anywhere and be there at the right time mm-hmm. or the right, right place at the right time. So, yeah. Any last comments before we uh, transition off to from Dallas and go to, to Detroit? Just don't be afraid of Dallas if you struggle with them at first. Stick with it; they're worth it. Love it, absolutely love it. Let's go on to the mighty Red Wings next, and this team they are stacked. So I want to hear your thoughts on them. Yes, lots of green cells on this roster, especially at the very top of it. Um, this is probably the most skilled team in the game at forward and defenseman. Um, you get Cicerelli, Eiserman, Federov. There's no wrong combination which just to put them in. A lot of people put Eiserman at center, Cicerelli on the slap shot wing on his left side. Uh, I got that. So I got that wrong on Cicerelli. He's actually a right-handed shot. Ignore the L. It needs to be updated. Um, he's a righty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll make the change right now. <laughs> I could do um, it on the fly. So Cicerelli but, is a, a righty. Yes, he's a righty. So th- there's a lot of agility, like five agility at least for each forward and five stick handling. Getting, and then also coffee, six agility, uh, five pat, uh, six stick handling. Getting the puck off of this team is a nightmare. Because they have four guys that can carry the puck up the ice and just dangle your entire team. Um, they have excellent shooters up front, excellent passers. They're all pretty smart. Um, they're all pretty light, so it's tough to line them up with checks, even if it's a weight bug check or a CB check. I mean, you're trying to nail these guys that can just skate circles around most teams. So you just playing against Detroit is a nightmare. You have to play very passive against them. So if you're comfortable dictating the pace of play, Detroit's a great team to have because you're going to have the puck more often than not, probably. And then if for whatever reason you think, oh, I have so much skill, I can diversify my lineup a little bit, you can put Dallas Drake out there on the right wing, and he can be like Neil Broughton. He's still almost just as good as Neil Broughton, and it can be useful in Tier 1 matchups. You know, you got Dale Howard, Chuck, you got Larmer, you got um, Jeff Portnall out there. You know, these guys that he can take advantage of when he lines up against them because he's got decent skating. He's got just enough skill to put in a, a, a backdoor one timer or, or even take a play to the net himself. So he's a very useful bench player who can be utilized in certain matchups. Um, beyond him, you don't really need to use a lot of the depth. I mean, Isabert's a perfectly fine player. He's basically the equivalent to Joe Murphy in Chicago. So you can throw him on the ice in tier one and you're probably going to be okay if you had an injury to one of your big stars. And then Kozlov and Probert, Kozlov's just your weight bug guy, an extra weight bug guy, and Probert's just your big CD muscle. Um, if for whatever reason you need him, he's actually okay. But again, in tier one, it's a little tricky for him. And then you all, and again, you have your classical question at defense. Do I want the big heavy guy like Steve Chase on who can CD check? Or do I want the little weight bugger, Lidstrom? Um, I, I tend to go Lidstrom in this situation more often than not because they have very similar skill sets. You know, one player isn't demonstrably better than the other with the puck or in their defensive zone or whatever. Um, so I, I tend to go Lidstrom unless I'm facing a team of all lightweight players. Um, and then I'll go maybe chase on if they're not, if that's not a very fast team also um, that we're playing against. And then they, they have defensive depth. Anything you want on defense, like you can't pick a wrong player. That's why basically everyone's listed. They're all playable, even at tier one. You know, you, they're all six weight. They can move a little bit. They can move the puck a little bit. Some of them can even shoot. I'm like, they don't have a weakness on the blue line, except, you know, maybe if some people don't like Paul Coffey because he's too inconsistent because you try to take the puck up with him. He's a little bit heavy. It's easy mm-hmm. to check him if you if you can line him up. But he can make so much happen that you don't really want to take him out. And he's also, if you put Lidstrom out there, he's just a good CB complement. So you have your weight bug checker on one side, your CB checker on the other side. It provides nice balance and diversifies what you can do on defense a little bit. And then, you know, the only real weakness on this team is Tim Shovel Day, and he's not even that weak. He's just very average goalie, perfectly fine. Um, you may have to hold his hand in goalie control a little bit when you have Ronick and McGillney and uh, other guys of this tier just shooting missiles at him, but he's not the worst. He's not Kelly Rudy level, so you you take what you can get from him. Uh, I'm looking at Probert. You would listen to him as a forward reserve. Is there any particular reason you'd want to start him? So you had of, you know, Kozlov, Iserbart, Fedorov, Drake. Is, is there any reason why, you, without injuries, 
would you say, you know, Probert is the guy I'm going to start with in this game? Because I'm wondering if there's any sort of lineup or configuration the opponent has that you're starting Probert. If Chaos can figure out how to put fighting a 94, then you put Probert in there just to, to goon it up. <laughs> this is <laughs> so Chaos. If you could get this going, uh, maybe we could get a GoFundMe round going and get you <laughs> working on this full time. So we get Bobby Probert playing in the game. It, it's, this team is great. Um, there's very few holes. I mean, in goalie, maybe, but like you said, he's he's more than competent, especially if you're a very good manual goalie player. Um, Detroit is just god tier and yeah there's i'm looking at the, the lineups you have there i have because i played them quite a bit in the past while i have nothing to say you did a great job here so any last comments before we switch off to the next team if you have detroit have fun <laughs> it's probably gonna be a good game next one is st louis blues and it's a team i am starting to absolutely adore red hall I love playing with him. I know he, he's slow and he's a little heavy. You're knocking him down is, is simple. But if you could feed him the puck, if you could find that one just brief moment of time where he's open, he's an absolute sharpshooter. And there's a lot of lightweight guys that you could throw out there with him just to, to keep the opponents honest. So I want to hear your thoughts on St. Louis. It's a really interesting team. Yes, there's not – like a lot of teams we've been talking about, uh, Detroit, St. Louis, even Chicago aside from Roenick. There's a lot of middleweight players, so playing defense can be a little bit tricky because you have to think about who these guys can check, who they can't check, right? When you have options like this, Nelson Emerson, Bob Bass, and Brett Hole, Shanahan, it's usually very clear. It's like, okay, well, this guy is just a weight bug checker. Go do weight bug checking. This guy is just a CB checker. Just go do CB checks. I don't really have to consider what's going on around me. You just do it. And that's what makes St. Louis you know, pretty easy to use, especially in its tier. Um they have lineup options, like you said. Um, so Emerson, Hall, Janney is like kind of like the default line. You get one heavyweight who can just absolutely blast the puck past any goalie in the game, Belfour and Watt included. You have Emerson, who's a great weight bug checker. He can carry the puck up the ice just enough to create offense to help Brett Hall get those one-time opportunities. And then Janney, who's just a very smart player. Um, he's your middleweight. So you have weight diversification. You can look at who you're playing against on defense and go, okay, well, maybe there's a big CB checker against Emerson, but the Janney matchup is better. I'll use the puck. I'll carry the puck up with Janney instead and create plays on that side of the ice as much as I can to, to feed Hull because that's basically what you want to do at the end of the day. That's that's why Brett Hull is always a center in these line combinations is because he's just the best center, and you want that guy just shooting rockets from the middle of the ice anywhere inside the blue line. Mm-hmm. And then you can even attack the middle of the ice with Hole himself sometimes, especially in tier four, because you have some heavier teams. So it's, they're not always going to have weight buggers or CV guys to just to rock him with. He has that five stick handling. So he can go through traffic, keep the puck on a stick. He could even toddle a little bit if somebody, if he does get hit. And he's just very dangerous and close. Um, his shot power is, is just a dream to use. And if you get in close, you don't really even notice his three accuracy. So um, he's excellent out there. Uh, Brandon Shanahan's kind of a. He's always a, an interesting player to ice out there because St. Louis is a little bit heavy, um, especially when you have Hole and you consider their defense. If you start Butcher and Brown, that's a lot of big guys out there. You're starting to look like Pittsburgh, but they have. I think St. Louis has more skill than Pittsburgh if you really look at it, just kind of um, in their ability to score goals and create plays. So you know, there's certain matchups where Shanahan's actually decent, and you get Emerson out there with him and to keep the other team honest. And then if you really don't like big dudes, you can go Emerson and Basson on the wing and just muck it up like it's 2016 with weight bug checking only <laughs> and uh, just get in your opponent's head with them. But the, the, the thing with the St. Louis is they don't have a lot of depth after that. They're, it's a pretty slow team in general, and their reserves don't really solve that problem for them. You know, Ron Sutter, Kevin Miller, they're perfectly fine, serviceable role players, but they don't have a lot going on in their game. They're just They're just consistent contributors that – you know, you can you can go to the bench too and feel comfortable in the, within this tier, but they're not game changers. Uh, and then the defense, Brown's your number one guy. Uh, he's got one of the best shots as a defender, but again, he's got the Mark Tenorti problem. Getting up the ice is an issue. Um, even in this tier where it's a little bit easier for him to get up the ice, still not great for him to get up there. Um, Butcher's just your, your pylon in the back. Doesn't really have a lot of strengths other than CB check straight ahead. Um, 
and he'll usually stay in his own zone. He doesn't stray too far, thankfully, because he's never going to get back if he does. Um, and then you just have this absolute litany of options of various quality. I mean, some of it's good, some of it's not good. Like Kurt Giles is the lowest rated defenseman on the roster, but he's also the lightest. So mm-hmm. that can be useful um, because he skates just well enough. It's a lot of his puck skills that drag down his rating. So at least he moves with three agility. Um, can chase down some people sometimes. And then, you know, Doug Crossman is like your middle of the road guy. Not exciting. So I don't usually play him. Steph, Stefan Quintal is your big, ugly guy. Um, we can move the puck a little bit. So when he actually does have a successful check, you're not panicking right away. Like, okay, what do I, I got to get this thing out of here? And I don't know where it's going to go. He can actually direct a pass, help break things out. Whereas Be- Murray Barron is the guy who skates a little bit better, but then you don't know where the pass is going or if he's going to be able to hang on to it after. So he's, he's a little bit more scary. And then uh, I put Rick Zombo on there because he's the default sub. And if you don't, def- if you don't sub him, you're going to see him. And he doesn't really do a whole lot of anything special, but he's, He's kind of like Doug Crossman, just nice middle of the road player, very unexciting. And then uh, Curtis Joseph in net, um, very solid goalie, a little overrated because his strengths are in his awareness, and we haven't really quantified what those awareness ratings do quite yet. Whereas <laughs> agility, weight, and the and the stick glove ratings, puck control, they're more quantifiable. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't have anything outstanding there. He looks very shovel dayish when you look at him. Hmm. So hopefully his brain, you know, comes into factor, but basically you're getting Tim shovel day otherwise, but it's a very exciting team. I I actually enjoy this team a lot. I've grown to love them. I hated them, hated them for years. It's like, what do you do with this team? I don't know. And it just clicked one day. And again, it's like one of those teams, you just have to level up with them. You can't just play them a few times, get, you know, just, you know, get, get, get discouraged by it. You have to develop a rapport with them. Yeah. I find you could play like a a kind of a defensive game against almost any team out there. And then you could just wear them down in terms of that defensive game. And then finally just get that one opening and then just Hall gets it, that shot. And well, (laughs) you have the lead. I find that they can be frustrating to play against if you're playing against the right person that's using St. Louis because just the players they have. And the types of combinations you could throw out there, there's lots of different options out there with them. So I, I love playing with them. They're, they're a lot of fun. to. Although I lose my fair share of games with them. Let's be perfectly honest. I'm not winning with them, but I'm having fun. But They can have one, some dud games, yes. One question I have for you, though, because I see there's a, a pretty good disparity between your home ice advantage and your road ice advantage, or disadvantage, sorry. So with that being said, do you tailor your team, your St. Louis team, different at home versus the road? I might be less afraid to change up my roster on the road. If I see someone's really struggling out there, um, I might change it up to just because you do have options. You have players with very clear strengths and weaknesses on this team. And um, you don't really struggle to, to see the differences in the players. So if I see something's not working right away, yeah, you can change up because you're going to have a very different option on the bench. You're not just, praying that someone very similar is going to be somehow different. Yeah. Well, St. Louis, I think we're done with them. Unless you have anything else you want to say, any final comments before we transition to, geez, who's next? Tampa. Ooh, that's going to be a fun one. But yeah, St. Louis, any last comments on them? Uh, no, I just learned to love them. They're, they're actually a really great team. And when you have a team with clear strengths and weaknesses, it can make it very easy to develop game plans with them. All right, now let's go to Tampa, one of the newer teams in the game. This is their second year, I think, in the league at this particular moment. So they had a little bit more of established roster compared to the other expansion teams. But still, a um, lot of bad, but one really good. I'm looking at Brian Bradley. That guy is an absolute stud in the right hand. So, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts on Tampa. Yeah, so just so people understand... Tampa was in the Norris division their very first season. So this isn't a typo. It's not us going crazy. We didn't fall off, you know, hit our head somewhere. This is this happened. This is real life. So it's okay. Um, I remember this. Six, I remember, yeah, they were playing the Leafs. And I, like, I remember them being in the Norris in the first year. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. And, <laughs> and yep. also going back, we had Dallas in the Norris. It's because the Minnesota North Stars were in the Norris division before they moved to Dallas. But, yeah, I just wanted to, to make a note of that. So, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's okay. Yeah. 
Um, so when you get into tier six, you're going to see a lot of red ink. You know, there's going to be a lot of losses in these rosters. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Brian Bradley, he's the top player in the tier, um, especially for it. I mean, maybe Gord Murphy's a better player at deep on defense in Florida, but oh. Bradley's really difficult to beat. He's 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 the top guy. I mean, just the fact that he has weight bug checking ability like he does. He has a little bit of agility to go with it. So when he's playing against these slower teams, he's perfectly capable of running down anybody in this tier and just throwing them into the glass, putting them on their back, and then turning the play around. Um, so he's gen- he's generally going to be your center because he's that powerful. He's like Ronick in this tier. He People are scared of calling Tampa Bay in this tier because he's a problem. And he has good support, especially up front. Uh, Contos is a great secondary scorer. Um, he's not super heavy, so he can handle a lot of these defensemen in this tier and, and play through them. Uh, he has good offensive awareness, so hopefully he finds those right spots on the ice because he's going to be a great secondary option. Once Bradley attracts all the attention, you just slide it over to Contos and you have a very good scorer in his own right on the other side. Um, and that's kind of the end of the goal scoring on this team. You get those two guys, you try and get four or five goals and – that's pretty much it because, you know, you got a bunch of bit players aside from them. Uh, Steve Casper, he's just a lightweight, not a great offensive player. He's a good checker. He's got four check rating. So you just kind of leave him alone on his own side. You go run around with Bradley, let Casper do his own thing, and he'll knock some people over. So he's useful in that regard. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people play Michael Anderson. Um, so I have him on one of the line combinations. I don't personally like Anderson at all because of his low agility and low puck skills but he's pretty light. He's got four speed that can be useful in this tier because there's not a lot of four speed players. And then Rob DeMaio, uh, he's also an option on like a weight bug checking line where you have Casper Bradley and DeMaio on the right. Um, so you have two five weight guys and a four weight guy. They can just run, run rough shot on all these teams in this tier with, with those three guys. And you're going to need that help because your defense is pretty bad. Um, your defense core. And then, you know, there's other, there's still other options in Tampa Bay. You, know, you got your middle of the road guys, Mark Bureau, Danton Cole, and then you have your CB guy, John Tucker, who doesn't really get a lot of ice time, but he's there if you want a CB guy. And then the guy you need to watch out for is Adam Creighton. He's a default mm-hmm. sub at center. And if you have Bradley um, in the box and Contos is somewhere else, or he's on the left wing, you're going to see a lot of Adam Creighton and he's not very good. So you may be interested in subbing him out. <laughs> Uh, Chicago didn't have their hearts broken when they lost him in the expansion draft. <laughs> yeah, there's not much options I can see at the forward ranks, and but even a defense is just. I'm shaking my head at these these uh, rankings here. They're pretty bad. I can't see much out there. Would anyone would be very happy to see out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is the worst defensive core in the league. And it didn't help that they traded three or four guys at the trade deadline. They traded Rob Ramage. They traded a, a Taglianetti to Pittsburgh. They traded uh, a couple other guys. I, I can't think of them right, right off the top. Uh, I think Doug Crossman, who we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of their depth just got dispersed around the league in March. And they were left with this, which is not great. Um, Bob Beers, he's your number one defenseman somehow. I mean, he has number one, <laughs> number one defenseman type name, but a number four defenseman type skill. <laughs> well said. <laughs> you know, he's, the goalies. He's, and the goalies don't help either. <laughs> so would you, I mean, I'm looking at this. Is Jablonski your go-to guy? Just the sheer fact that he has the lowest weight in comparison to the other two guys. I'm looking at Wendell Young and JC Bergeron. They're a little bit heavier. So is Jablonski the guy you're going with? Uh, no, I, I usually just stick with Young. I, he's got a little bit better save ratings. So the hope is if he ever saves anything, he actually hangs onto it or knocks it wide of the net instead of having trickle in. Um, Jablonski's, and he's also got lower agility. Jablonski's got two agility compared to Young's three. So that's a big deal. I would take the extra agility point over the one less spe- uh, weight uh, point where Jablonski might move a little bit better, but not at that agility. Um, that's just not going to work. So these forwards have their work cut out for them. They're playing both sides of the ice. They're covering yeah. the defense and the goalie, but they can do that in this tier. They can handle it. They're they're easily the top team in the tier. Yeah, I, I'm not going to fight you on that. Um, any final comments before we slide off to Toronto? Um, no. That yeah, Tampa Bay is a fun team in their tier. Don't try to take them up 
to Hartford or New York Islanders, you'll you'll probably have a very poor time with that. Hundred percent. And last but not least, in the North Division, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs, my beloved Toronto Maple Leafs at that time. So, yeah, a team that uh, this is the year they they made it to the semifinal. Just want to give a quick uh, history in it. And yeah, Gretzky high stuck high sticking. Uh, Gilmore the referee didn't see it, and uh, the rest is history. So, take it away. What are your thoughts on Toronto Maple Leafs? <laughs> for, for a team that went so far in the playoffs and had a good regular season, they have a very average rated team. You get one superstar, Doug Gilmore, who even some people don't really care for because he doesn't have like an elite skill aside from checking. He doesn't have five stick handling to go through trap. He doesn't have five shot power, five accuracy, five speed. Um, he's just kind of the Swiss army knife who's a pain in the neck to play against, but doesn't really um, take the team into like another stratosphere. And then he doesn't have great help. He has good help. Borshevsky's a good uh, second player. Uh, usually you have him on the left wing. Uh, you use his playmaking ability as best you can to try and set up Gilmore for one timers, but he's not like a great defensive option. He's not super fast. He's just a nice, decent player. And then the third forward spot's the tricky one. You have Glenn Anderson, who's just lesser Borshevsky. Mm-hmm. So you have basically the same player on both sides of Gilmore that can get a little redundant. Um, John Cullen's a little bit better with the puck. He's right handed. So he can do EA specials from the left wing. Um, he's agile. So he's actually really um, elusive, especially when you have like five speed Gartner, Tikkanen, Madano, Courtnall, these guys trying to run this guy down. He just plays like in these little pockets and is very annoying for these faster players to try and track down if you're playing very tight and technical hockey. So he can be a useful player. He's a little bit different than Anderson. who's a little bit faster and you don't lose any skill with Colin. You actually maybe gain a little bit. And then Wendell Clark, I used to start Wendell Clark a lot, not so much anymore. His He has great five-shot power, but he's slower. Um, in this tier, it's tough for him because he's not the same playmaker that John Cullen. He doesn't have that extra agility point. He's not right-handed like John Cullen. So the right-handers have better skating as opposed to left-hand because of the animations of the, the two players. So you value that extra agility point a lot with John Cullen, whereas Clark's just – he's kind of blah when he skates. So it can be he can get lost in a game, and then you have Andrew Chuck, who's just more like Clark. I mean, yeah, more like Clark, but heavier, really tough mm-hmm. to use. Um, so I almost never play him. I just put him there for an option, just in case you're really struggling for something and you need a goal. Like if you need a goal off a of, off of one timer in the offensive zone with like a few seconds left, he's gonna be their best option, one of their better options. So he's just something to keep in mind. And then Mike Krzyzewski is the default sub at center when Gilmore inevitably goes to the box, which he does all the time and get him out of there. Cause he's not, he's not a strength to this team. So he's got, he's got a lot of red ink down there and he's slow. So he's not going to be very helpful. So Borshevsky, Gilmore, those are your two mainstays. And then you decide what you want to do at the other wing, Anderson, Colin, or maybe even Clark, if you really want that shot power for some reason. And then the defense is also pretty simple. Dave Ellis, your clear, obvious number one defenseman. Very good in this tier. He can skate. He can move the puck. He's got great shot power. He can hit. He does a little bit of everything out there. And then you have your choice, Jamie McCown. A little bit more CB checking, but not. he's not overly large. He's only he's at eight weight, so he's kind of a middleweight. But then you have Todd Gill at six weight. Not a weight bug checker, but light enough to do some weight bug checking against the bigger players like Tikkanen. Um, he can get. But he's very low skill. McCown has a little bit more skill. So I usually go McCown. But Gill's perfectly fine as well. And then Bob Rouse is your reserve guy. Um, the lone right-handed defenseman that's useful on this roster. He can see the snot out of most players. 10 weight, four checking. Um, good reserve defenseman, but terrible with the puck. Terrible. Uh, and then Felix Poppins, your number one goalie. He's one of the better goalies in the game. He's probably number four after Wah, Belfour, Pure. Uh, he's excellent. He's got the big brain like Curtis Joseph as well, but a little bit better save ratings. To, to pair along with that big brain and uh, Pupa, uh, you'll see him in draft leagues with starter cre- credentials, but he's nowhere near the level of pop. And so usually you just leave him back there. He's a very heavy goalie as well. He's not agile. So he can be tricky to move around, but he's great for like, if you have a guy just crashing in your net, um, he can withstand a lot of those net crashes because of how big he is. Uh, you know, it's, 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 
this is a tough team to use with matchups because you have one player that's excellent and one defenseman that's really good. And then the rest of the roster is just kind of like, well, we're here. We can help. But, <laughs> you know, we're not going to do anything outstanding. Um, and you play a lot of teams in tier three that are that can do outstanding things. Dal- uh, Dallas, the Rangers, they have very high ceilings. They can be very tough to keep up with for Toronto if they're really clicking. And then Quebec. Quebec's a good matchup for Toronto because it's not they're not a very fast team. They're very similar. So they, they actually have a lot of good matchups with Quebec. Yeah, and that's uh, you're basically describing what they were in real life. They were a gritty team that just they, they played with an edge, didn't have a lot of skill, but they were able to, to get it all together and work their way to a tremendous season. And I'm looking at, at their defense, and one thing I noticed is all the ones you listed, Elliot, McCown, Gill, and Rouse, they all have four checkings. So leaving them alone and letting them do their thing is is sometimes a good thing, especially McCowan being a little bit heavier and having better defensive awareness than, say, Todd Gill. Just let let Elliot and McCowan do their thing, and they'll be able to be a pretty decent force for the most part. And so it just seems like you have to play with the forwards in the defensive zone and try to try to lend a hand like that. I don't know if, if that's a good analogy or a good um, analysis of this, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. That's actually a really great point, and I didn't realize they all had four checking until I put it into the spreadsheet. I go, oh, wow. Yeah. They all have four checking. That's that's very unique. You don't usually have a defense core like that, and they all can move fairly well. Um, so it is encouraging to see that, and then it encourages you more just to use Gilmore. Like You don't feel bad about using Gilmore. It's like, oh, I got this defenseman I should be using to try and yeah. make get more out of him. It's like, no, he's probably fine by himself. I'm going to go chase the play down with Gilmore, be annoying, get that third guy in there. And really that's Gilmore's biggest strength is his defensive tenacity. He's got five agility, four weight. That's all you want from weight bug checker. Good skating, lightweight. So don't feel bad about utilizing it to, to the most, best of your ability. And try to avoid those CB checkers because they'll eat you up all day long being at four weight. Yes. Yeah, so don't be afraid to play from your wing. If you like playing from the center and you're facing up off against a guy with a great CB check mentality, uh, it can be very difficult for Toronto to create offense. But if you can use your wings, move the puck around, uh, be elusive, uh, change up your offensive, where you attack from, uh, Toronto can can score some goals. They, they do have decent shot accuracy. The ch- they're, the, they're that team that, you know, if you get six or seven shots a game, they can score five goals because they have enough skill shooting wise to do that. They do. It's kind of a Jekyll and Hyde thing. You don't know what you get when you're going to sign up with them. It's similar to uh, Dallas in a way. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, it's always when I play Toronto, it's like uh, I wish a little bit more was they had something else. There's just so much average players up front and whatever. It's uh, still a good team to play with, but they're not top tier. <laughs> Unfortunately, it breaks my heart as an old Toronto Maple Leafs fan. But any last words on that? Any, any last comments before we wrap things up with the North Division? No, I think I think we covered them pretty well. Awesome. So AJ, just want to thank you very much for doing this. We, today we finished the Norris. We'll be doing, I guess, the Smythe Division next. So yeah, with that, um, any last words before we sign off and uh, go from there? Uh, there's a lot of strong teams in this division. Um, don't be. There's a couple of them. Don't be afraid to try and use them more often to get better with them. Uh, Chicago and Detroit, they're top of the, they're they're top of the game. So they're. Don't, you know they're excellent to use. They can be scary to call against their, with with a skilled opponent across from you, but they got plenty of skill to keep up. So don't be afraid of those teams either. These are teams that a lot of people are very familiar with, and uh, it's I think it's a fun division. It might be one of the more interesting ones we'll get to talk about. All right, thanks so much, AJ, and I hope you appreciated watching this video or listening to the audio if i'm going to be putting this online i'm still debating if i am because it's a lot of visuals in this but with that take care keep your controller plugged in and your stick on the ice